years I've been using the circuit simulator at falstad.com slash circuit and it's proved to be incredibly useful. It has one disadvantage, it's based on Java and behind college firewalls, um, Java, because of its rather stricter security, it's become problematic running it. So, joy of joys, when the whole project was ported to Lush Projects, forward slash circuit JS. This one's based on HTML5 and JavaScript, and the typical college security policies won't have a problem with it. Now it's pretty easy to build circuits here, so right click and they're all listed including shortcut letters like W for wire or R for resistor. So if you want a resistor you can either click, click and drag, that gives you a resistor. Uh, right click if you don't want 100 ohms you can right click, change it to 330. <coughs> Excuse me. Press L for LED. There's an LED. Press W for wire. Draw a wire. And we're building. Now there's a huge choice of components. I'm looking for the D type flip flops. And there it is. And to position one, you have to, if you press the mouse, nothing happens. If you press the mouse and drag, it appears. If you get something you didn't want, you can undo with Control Z. Let's right click, edit that, and I would like set and reset pins. While we're here, let's go hunting for a clock. That'll be an input device. Add a clock. There it is, I'd quite like 100 hertz. It's already on 100 hertz, that'll do nicely. <coughs> Voice is going, I do apologise, it's winter. Right. If you want to move this, if you hold down shift, if you point at the end, it'll drag around like that. If you point at the other end, it'll drag around like that. If you point in the middle, the whole thing will move. That's holding down the shift key. And that's different from the old fashioned Falstad. I'm going to add a G for ground. Put that there. And now I've got a complete circuit and that's flashing the LED on and off. W for wire. Drag that so that the clock is there. More wire. W for wire. Now this is a bit fiddly. If you do that, there's a red dot there, which means your wire is not connected. What you have to do is make the ends of the wires touch each other and then they actually connect. Let's have another wire. Stretch that one a bit. I'd like to connect not Q back to the D input and I'm building a one bit binary counter. Now around about now I can start saving time. Let's go into select drag mode and you could gain that by pressing the space key. And I'm going to drag around those two. Right click, copy, come away, right click, no, just Control-V to paste. That didn't do what I wanted. Undo it. I was trying to copy them both. Can you do Control-C, Control-V? Yeah, that's what we wanted. So Control-C copied, Control-V pasted. And also they're still joined together. I can move them around together. A bit more wire. Stretch that. And we've got a one bit binary counter. The output is at half the clock rate of the input. We can play with the clock. Let's have a duty cycle of only 10%. So now we've got a very short clock pulse. 
but the output pulse is on 50% of the time precisely. And that's one of the uses of this circuit. Now what if I want a 2-bit counter? So I'm going to drag that out, copy it, paste it. Hold down shift and move it across a bit. Stretch that wire. Stretch that wire. And rather than redo the whole thing from scratch, I copied one. Here's one I made earlier. Paste it in. And this counter is now counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's a quick introduction to building circuits using the Lush Project's originally Falstad circuit simulator. Highly recommended. You can, in a couple of minutes, you can build a circuit at zero cost. But there is a problem. Let's change that resistor into one milliohm. That's one mega ohm, that's quite annoying. I really did want one milli ohm, it's not letting me do it. Let's just change it to one ohm. And you can see there's rather a lot of current here now. Um, I've pointed the mouse at the resistor, and down in this part of the screen, it tells you the current is 2.8 amps. And that will destroy both the chip and the LED and probably the power supply. So you can build circuits that won't work in real life. That's just one thing to be aware of. You could change the power supply to a million volts. And that would be fun. So recommend this, learn how to use it. You can save yourself a lot of time. Uh, you can pre-build a project, see if it works. Just bear in mind that you can build impossible stuff. Mm.